In this tutorial, I want to discuss the generation of point sprites inside of a basic GLSL shader. It can be extremely powerful to use point sprites in a UI because it's not affected by the camera's scale or position. So in our example scene, we're going to start by instancing a particle uh, rendered as a point sprite along a line. Then we'll use GLSL to set the size of a sprite as well as texture it from a texture 3D top. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to create a single particle. So we're going to do an add sop. Oop. Um, we are going to set this to add one polygon. We'll do by pattern. I'll just do bop closed. And that's, that's it. Go from here, we'll do a convert. We need to convert from all types to convert to particles per point. And then we need to do render as point sprites. So that's gonna get us, and we'll just finish that off with a null. Um, and then add a geometry. All right, so that's gonna be what we're going to instance. Now we need to create our line which we will instance across. Um, so we can do, in my case, I had for every second, I had a new number. So, you know, what we can do is number of points, number of points 30. So point A to B would be 30 so that we have one per, per unit and then We'll also do a null there. Oh. Um, let's see there. And then instance. We know the deal here. So TXP one there. And then, all right. So you're not going to obviously see anything. So we need to, because we're going to use GLSL to actually create and render these point sprites. So we can just do a GLSL, just a regular GLSL. Uh, and the first thing we actually need to do is create our texture. So go to text. Um, we'll just do round um, me.time.frame. And we're going to that there that so we want to put this into a texture 3d so that it fills up this little buffer here and so we can do pre-fill and so then we'll have the numbers one through well yeah one through one through 30 that's what we want. So now in our GLSL, we'll take, we'll create a new sampler and we'll do S frame map and map the texture 3D to the top. And all right, so open our vertex shader. So, so what we have to do in the vertex shader is we need to set the point size so we're going to do GL point size equals um, what we will do. Uh, f we'll do a uniform uh, for the point size. We'll go point size and then add a uniform for that. So uniform flow to point size. And then we'll come in here. Uniform U point size and make this something like. 50. Um, still not going to see anything because uh, there's no texture on the point. So um, we're also going to be using the uh, instance ID. So uh, we'll just create real quick. We'll just go out vertex flat int instance ID uh, overt and then 
then we need to pass the instance ID here. So we'll do uh, over dot instance ID equals TD instance ID. All right, so then we need to deal with the texture here. So we can real quick, oh, we got to bring in in vertex. Flat int instance ID. Probably should have copied this. Ivert. Yeah, we need to bring in our sampler that we created. Smappler. Sampler. 2D array. S frame map. And then. So here's kind of the trick to using these inside of your shader. You have to do, because you know there's no there's no UV coordinate, you know, for a particle here. So we're gonna do uh, vec two vec two UV equals gl point cord dot st, and so that's gonna give us our point coordinate, and so. Our, uh, then we need to back for frame map equals texture s frame map back three grabbing the texture from the sampler. Um, and so now we're gonna just do, we can start off with zero and then color plus equals frame map. Um, and then, so now we're missing something. Does not match up with the type. Texture, oh, I did, yeah, 2D texture array. It's supposed to be 2D texture array. So depending on your camera setup, you might just need to raise up the font size so under your text tree, text 3D, you need to toggle on and off your prefill. All right, so now you can see our scene here, and it's pretty cool because the text stays the same no matter what I do with my camera. And it's starting to, it looks a little wacky because, you know, the points are kind of overlapping. But um, overall, you can kind of see that using point sprites for text can be pretty powerful. And so the part two of this, this tutorial um, is going to be showing how you could take that idea and use that to actually drive timecode. So you know, what we're going to show here is how you know I took that same idea, all these icons right here, each one of these icons is a point sprite. So this whole thing. And so what's cool is that the only ones that are visible are, you know, the 15 at this point are the 15 minute marks, the 30 minute marks, the 45 minute. And then, but as I zoom in, we're revealing more. So now it's the 15, 20, 25, and then we zoom in more and we, we have more smaller increments. Um, and that's, based on the level of, of zoom. And so that's gonna be part two, and we'll probably make that a separate video. Okay, well that's it for this. Uh, part two will be a high level look at how you can use point sprites to produce timecode in your UI.